Hello, BookTube. Believe it or not, a bookshelf tour. <laughs> now, not the whole library because there's tons of it, but I, it, we're, we're a bit wobbly, we're a bit amateur, but I thought I'd show you just one shelf here. Of This is my biography bookshelf. So if we start at, uh, at this end here, this is... <laughs> This is uh, Charles Ross's biography of Richard III from years and years ago, but it's never been never been bettered. Uh, and then this big thing is William Shawcross's official biography of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Gigantic thing, uh, and quite good. Uh, then we have Anne Somerset's biography of uh, Queen Anne. Queen Anne is a favorite of mine. I've mentioned her on this channel before. Uh, in connection with a novel, a Queen Anne novel that's coming out uh, next month. Then we have Seymour Phillips' Edward II, much vilified Edward II. Uh, and this book, it's also huge, it's a chunker. And it uh, delves into why Edward II has been vilified and how trustworthy that vilification is. It turns out most of it was probably posthumous and completely wrong, a complete lie. Uh, and then we, we do very little from from royalty here. <laughs> this is uh, the updated version of The Art of Scandal by Douglas Shantucci. This is his biography of, uh, of her, Isabella Stewart Gardner, uh, whose name is on her famous museum here in Boston. And then we have uh, Avril Cameron's Procopius and the 6th century. This is about the famous historian and, and his times, and it is so good. Oh, my. I'm not sure it's actually a biography, though. I'm not sure what it's doing here. Uh, then we have a book that I've mentioned before on this channel, but I don't think I've ever shown it to you. It's King William IV by Philip Ziegler, who's a great biographer and who specializes in taking figures like William IV, who are sots and cads and morons in history who've been dismissed by history and writing great biographies of them bi biographies that really mean something without ever changing the fact that they're cads and morons uh, he has, he's done a few of those and this is my favorite one uh, then we have Theo Aronson Prince Eddie and the Homosexual Underworld this is the, the uh, Cleveland Street scandal and uh, the grandson of Queen Victoria who was very distantly implicated in that scandal. He wasn't actually part of it at all. This is mostly speculation, uh, but it's fun speculation. Uh, and of course, Prince Eddie is also the subject of speculation for an even more absurd thing, which is that uh, some people theorize that he was Jack the Ripper. <laughs> he, literally, there were mornings in his life when he was a teenager when he would wake up and literally need someone to remind him where the entrance to his bedroom was. <laughs> he was not smart enough to commit the greatest crime of the 19th century. <laughs> uh, then we have Lady Colin Campbell, the Queen Mother. Uh, this is her biography of uh, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, only this is not an official life. This is an unofficial life in the most vigorous sense imaginable. This is all the backstairs kitchen gossip about about the Queen Mother, that, that Lady Campbell was in a perfect position to hear and know, and oh god, is it good, oh my. Uh, then we have uh, S.B. Trimes' uh, biography of Henry the Seventh, father of King Henry the uh, Eighth. This is in the, the uh, well, this is, uh, I.R. Methuen is the publisher here, because this is an actually, this is actually a UK edition, but this was the Yale English Monarch series, and he did the final word on Henry the Seventh, who's, uh, the founder of the Tudor dynasty, but often underestimated. Uh, we have a lot of information about him. It's a, it's a fantastic book. Uh, and we have this big thing. Look at this. Stanley Weintraub's biography of Queen Victoria. And there she is by Winterholler on the, on the front as a, a ravishing young thing. And there she is on the back. This is a, a bitter old woman. <laughs> and the book is huge. And Stanley Weintraub, I, I think I've mentioned him on this channel before. He's one of my all-time favorite uh, biographers and historians. He just cannot write a boring paragraph. And then we have Philip Ziegler again for the Duke of Windsor. This is King Edward VIII, the, the man who abdicated the English throne in order to marry the woman I love, <laughs> the thrice-divorced Wallace Warfield Simpson. Uh, so another, another cad in English history, and yet this is a great book. <laughs> it's all the strength of the writer. And then we, uh, we move away from uh, monarchy. This is a classic of 20th century biography by Gita Sereni. This is Albert Speer, His Battle with the Truth about Hitler's architect who lived in, you know, spent a long time in prison and shaped his own posthumous uh, reputation to an extent that was not, to an extent that was never given to any other Nazi, to the point where 
what he wanted was for people to think of him as the quote-unquote good Nazi, and he, he worked real hard to make that happen. And Dieter Sereni interviews him, talks to him, and writes an exhaustive book about him that largely dispels that. This is fascinating, an absolutely fascinating book. Uh, and you'll see it. <clears throat> if you're in, at all interested, you really ought to read it. It's a classic of, uh, of 20th century biography. And then we have Johnny Elliott Gardner. This is Music in the Castle of Heaven. This is his beautiful... Uh, fantastic biography of Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, there, there he is on the, on the spine. I don't don't have a sweet spot for musical biographies myself, but this was fantastic. This is the best thing Gardner's ever done. And then uh, uh, a fellow hack. <laughs> this is Peter Ackroyd. This is his life of Shakespeare. There are, of course, a million lives of Shakespeare out there. there. There are two or three every year, and there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. But Ackroyd is a good writer. He This is... Probably my favorite, other than uh, uh, Anthony Burgess, his, his book on Shakespeare, which isn't really a biography, but it, it gets in. I mean, the, the number of things we know for sure about Shakespeare, the number of, bio of biographical details we know about him for sure, would fill two sheets of loose-leaf paper. So all the rest is dependent on the author, on the skill of the author. And Peter Ackroyd never lets you down. <laughs> and then we go back to royalty <laughs> uh, with Jim Wynn's Queen Anne. Another book, on, this is a, a bigger book on Queen Anne by a friend of mine, uh, and it's fantastic. I, uh, it's just fantastic. It, it stretches the blanket a little because uh, you see the, the subtitle is Patroness of the Arts. Uh, and he, he's, it's really good on the biography aspect of Queen Anne, but he also tries to make the case that she was... <laughs> I, I chuckle just saying it, that she was some sort of closet intellectual. <laughs> and uh, it, it doesn't work, uh, but it's, it's a fantastic book anyway. Uh, and then the last thing, I'm not, again, actually sure what this is doing on the biography show. This is Darwin and the Beagle uh, by Alan Moorhead, the author of The White Nile, uh, famous book, The White Nile, uh, in which he just narrates, I mean, Darwin was on the Beagle and wrote his own book, uh, and this is just him, this is... This is Moorhead narrating that story with, uh, you know, lavish pictures all throughout. So this is not actually a biography at all. It <laughs> has nothing to do with the theory of natural selection. It has nothing to do with Darwin's later work. So I don't know what it's doing here. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have to redo these shelves. <laughs> and there you have it. That is, uh, that is one shelf of my biography bookcase. <laughs> at this rate, we'll be done by 2222. <laughs> Thank you, book two.